Good morning, guys. It is Saturday, and uh, it is uh, the ending of this very, very busy week. The last video did end off on, we finished up um, the last project of the week on Friday, and uh, so we're starting a new crafty vlog. Welcome to the beginning of a new crafty week. And um, so my last event, um, you know, I have had an eventful week. Um, and the last thing that I am in charge of, <laughs> the last thing that I have to do is this uh, Cards for Soldiers project that I'm doing with my small group at church. And so what I've done is I pretty much have prepared everything. It's going to be really mostly about them just putting together the cards, right? Uh, in any way that they want. I've just prepared uh, most of the elements and they can then choose what they want to do. But I want to show you the examples that I have created um, to share uh, with them so they can see. Now we kept it simple. You can make cards super, super elaborate. Um, but for cards for soldiers, they need to be able to fit in an envelope. Um, these are going to be cards that the soldiers will be able to use to, um, send back to their families, to their friends, to their loved ones, spouses, par partners, besties. And so uh, you need to keep them kind of simple. Uh, one of the parameters was that, uh, for these particular cards, they do not want any glitter on them because um, glitter can come off and if the glitter is coming off on a soldier it will reflect the light and depending on what they're doing uh, they would be able to be spotted maybe in the dark and that's not what something we want is if they're in the dark doing something they don't need to be spotted right so no matter what you feel about you know, the country or even the military. I mean, these are guys that are men and women who are really going to be, you know, on boots on the ground uh, in a conflict. And so we need to support them no matter what we feel about our current president or the, who would, who is, you know, the head of this operation. Uh, we still need to report uh, support the, the the men and women, often really young men and women, who have chosen this path in life. So anyway, this is an opportunity to support them, and this is our service project for the month. So here's how you package them. You actually, so these are all A2 size cards, so they're like 5 by 4 something like that. And so what I've done is I've taken the card base which, you know, we purchased. We, you can make these out of easily, but I just took the easy way out and purchased the card bases. And then, you know, I punched out these shapes and rounded the corners. I, the corners were rounded on the um, card bases, so that's why I rounded the corners on the mat. But I like rounded corners anyway. This is rubber stamped. And that's just another piece of the scraps that I use with a little bit of washi tape. Um, and then what you do is you do package. You take the envelope, put it inside the car. This is what they want. And then um, you put it inside of this silo bag, which we will eventually seal up. But for now, I'm keeping it open so that I can show this as an example tomorrow. Once I collect all the cards, then I will mail them off to the organization who is uh, who sponsors it. So this is one that I did. Now this one uh, is the second one I did. Now here's the beauty. When you buy, I didn't bring it over here. I already have my things piled up, ready to pack up to take to the group tomorrow. But a couple of things. When you buy a paper pack... Um, so you go to Michael's and they have these uh, 12 by 12 paper packs. When you open them up, um, they have, sometimes they have double-sided paper, sometimes they have single-sided paper, but they almost always have um, a cut-apart page. And in this particular, um, let's see, this, this particular paper pad that I already own, I probably got it like for $5 because Michaels will do those $5 sales and it's hard to resist even though I don't paper craft that often. 
But these types of things come in handy. This is not something I had to buy. This particular um, paper pack had two, they had like four different, no, two different cut out, cut apart pages, which means it's a 12 by 12 sheet, but all the elements are, can be cut apart and used. This is, this thank you sentiment is from one of the cut apart pages. So I went ahead and cut apart all the pages, uh, all the cut apart pages so that people can use them. And this way you don't have to rubber stamp. You can just grab one of these and, and go for it. So again, here you go. I'm taking it out of the cello bag, the cello, ba cello, cello bag. And you can see it. I used, um, I, punch, I, didn't, I couldn't find my hole puncher, which I will find before we go tomorrow. Um, and you uh, punch a hole. I put a piece of embroidery floss to tie the tag. And then I just, you know, punched it on, stamped it. I mean, I just glued it down. I'm using double-sided tape mostly. And yeah, and this little, little contrast color flag, that's just a piece of scrap. So you can use every bit of your paper pack if you would like. And there are people who do videos on this in YouTube. So for these cards, it was important that we use a white background so that people can, the, the soldier can write on it and it, it can be seen. It's kind of fun to use pretty paper, but, or even craft paper. I do have some card bases that are craft paper. If we use those, we would then still need to put a mat on the inside of white so that, which we could do in order to, um, uh, in order to, uh, to make it so that the soldier can write on it and it can easily be seen. Like, you can certainly write on craft colored paper, but it's just better for it to be white. It's just easier. So, these are the two examples that I have made, uh, for this, uh, group project tomorrow. I'll try to throw up some pictures of everybody's cards. Um, I... This paper is double-sided, so people can use either side. I'm bringing washi tapes. I'm bringing my rubber stamps and my ink pad, my punches, everything. I'm going to bring everything I have so that they can be creative. These will just be examples, but they don't have to do it this way. Um, uh, just examples of how to do something really quick and simple and something that is super, super usable. All right, that's it. That's all for this segment. I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye. Or in the next clip. Bye. So this is the paper pad that we are using. I'm 100% sure I got it from Michael. So look at this. Includes glitter and foil. So I really had to make sure that I didn't use um, anything with a glitter. And so you can see very pretty papers. But there you can see the double-sidedness of it all. All right, so people can choose um, which one. Now, there are some that I thought I was going to use and then figured out it had glitter on it, so I had to back up. I wanted to show you a cut-apart page. Like, uh, you could use the foil ones. I think I'm showing y'all too much. You could totally use the foil one, but here you go. Here's a cut -apart. Now, we're not using this one. Because I already cut apart the pages I'm going to use. But I wanted you to see what I mean by cut apart. So all of these elements could be used on a card. However, this page couldn't be used because there is plenty of glitter on this one. And while I don't think it would come off, who knows, it could. So these are 12 by 12 paper pads. Now this part right here is not included in the 12 by 12. So you can slice that off with a paper cutter which is what i did and then you just go through and cut apart the cut aparts and use them like some of these i wanted to use but like this one has glitter this one doesn't so i could have cut that one out this one doesn't this one does and i would have wanted to use that so you got these two that don't have glitter this one doesn't have that one does just a little bit i can feel it so i'm just saying i might go back and see if there's like this whole thing is outlined with glitter can't use it but something else could be like me nope glitter let's see glitter 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 for sure glitter for sure glitter for sure i couldn't use any of these but there are one or two that could be used 
um, but not any of these. So really, one, <laughs> one and two, three and three. Those are the only things that we could have used off of this page. Anyway, I just want you guys to see that. That's what I meant when I said cut apart page. Okay, bye y'all. All right, this is the beginning of my very first Make 9 project. Um, I'll show, the, show you what I'm making shortly, but I finally got started. I haven't made Amigurumi and Worsted Weight in a while. Uh, so, yeah, let's go. All right, guys, so continuing on, this Crafty Week is Sunday, and I wanted to show you that uh, in the previous video, I talked about the Easter egg hunt. It hasn't happened yet, but I still needed to fill one more egg, and it's all filled, so I wanted to show you guys what I ended up making. I can get this off. So, I put in, <laughs> I made another bunny, uh, like the one that I'm gifting to my bestie with the, um, the poncho that I made. But I made one more of these Easter egg bunnies, um, for a pattern be linked down below. It's from Kuke, and uh, she's fairly popular. Her actual handle is a little bit too hard for me to pronounce, so I'm not using another language. I think it's in French, and so I'm not even going to try it, but I did want you to see that I finished this bunny this morning, and how nicely. You got to kind of put it in tail first, and the person's going to have to fluff out the bobbles, I guess, when they get it out of here, but it fits nicely into the egg and yeah i'm excited to do this i really hope that i can get everything hidden and so that no one else uh they don't see it before i reveal that they're hidden so the the good thing like i said is that i work later than most people most people will be gone home and i'll run around and hide my six eggs so that's that then i wanted to show you this one again uh the bts uh project for the month, we know that I'm making one purple thing every month. This is the pattern, but it didn't come with this, but I was inspired by the other uh, pattern to put a fluffy tail on it uh, by that Easter egg pattern. I said, I want to give this guy a tail too. And so here you go, all set, all done. Um, and ready i tried on this one to sculpt the face and it just did not look good it looked really weird so it, the pattern didn't call for sculpting i just wanted to do it because i had done it successfully on the other bunny so there's at least one more bunny coming because i did get uh, somebody reached out to me and asked for one so we will get working on that one later on today uh but yeah this is where we're at so far in this crafty week all right Please don't forget, watch all of the Seasonal Yarn YouTube Pop videos, guys. The women really brought it, okay? I mean, you talk about everything was so diverse, everything was so interesting, and you will very much enjoy watching all of their videos and get a ton of inspiration, and then just wait and see what we come up with for, um the summer edition i already think i know what i'm going to do but y'all know i'm 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 prone to changing my mind but uh the other thing that's going to be upcoming is hooking up with books um doing that with caroline for the love of crochet and um with uh i think Catherine for from craftably ever after um they pick a book we read the book and then you uh take inspiration from that to create a project and i already kind of know what i want to create i just gotta find the right pattern all right that's it that's all all right guys uh <laughs> i'm done with my event it was a rip roaring success we were able to make a total of 40 cards today and we had a wonderful potluck i'll try to flash some pictures but i wanted you to see the bounty of cards we were able to create and now i am going to be packaging those up and sending them off um to cards for soldiers so super excited that this one uh, was well received um people enjoyed it and we got to do a little bit of good using crafting okay bye all right guys so uh that's it uh the this is the end of that very this has been a full full week and today was the last thing 
that I had that I was sort of in charge of and it went beautifully, went really well. And um, yeah, I'm happy with how everything came out. We made a total together of 37 cards and I was like, ah, let's just bring that on up to 40 that we will mail off. So I made three more, but I left one of them in the packaging, but I'll show you two of the ones that I made and tell you a little bit about them. So you can see that one. You make me smile. And I just used some washi tape. The sentiment is from a set of cards that I got from, I think, AliExpress or um, Timu. And I thought they were going to be something else. I thought I would, might use them in my verse mapping. But in the end, I felt like they were just really not, while they were super cute and encouraging, they weren't what I needed for the um, the verse mapping uh, journal. So, uh, so I'm glad I figured out a way to use them because this way no one had to really rubber stamp if they didn't want to. I think one person used the rubber stamps. But mostly we just put on the, we either use the cut aparts or we use these sentiments. So that was this one. I used a little bit of washi tape, and embroidery floss, as well as uh, those little foam butterflies. So I did that one. And then this one says, you can do it too. And the back, I wanted to go bold with the colors because I wanted to use some of these uh, planner background papers and so that's what I did the one with the butterflies there and this one is just like little dots and they're foiled if you could kind of see so that's foil not glitter and then I have one more but at this point I have put all 40 cards and packaged them like this uh, we will find a way to transport them. I'm going to put them in a box. I'm, I, I'm going to put them in a box so that they don't get uh, destroyed in an envelope. Um, that's how I'm going to send them. I'm going to find a little box or I'm going to uh, use a, a prepaid, you know, one from the post office and go ahead and send that off. And then we would have pulled off this project so very very fun uh little service project easy to do in a group um i brought everything because i'm a craft supply hoarder you guys know that um so people didn't really need to bring anything i just asked people if they had a glue stick bring that as i didn't know if i had enough like double-sided tape but it turns out i had enough and one person did bring her glue stick and it was just really cool to see everybody do this work and i'll flash up some pictures so you guys can see everybody hard at work and then after we finished everything we um cleaned up and put all the potluck food out and everybody had a good time i made chili but it was too salty but thank god somebody brought um corn muffins and someone brought uh the sour cream and the cheddar cheese and all those things helped to cut down on the salt uh, so i have to watch it uh because i did end up using i was you know, trying to get it done, and I used um, the seasoning packets, and you know those are full of salt. I should use less seasoning packets and more just the seasonings. That's going to be my tip for myself for the future. All right, that's it for this clip. I'll see you in the next one. I got to get back to crocheting. I did get a order for um, another bunny, and so I'm going to go ahead and make that and then I think I will get back to working on um, my Make Nine project. And yeah, I think that's going to be it. That's going to be all for right now. You'll see some more clips later. Bye.
All right, guys, Bunny's done. Bunny is done, guys. This one was requested with baby friendly eyes. I did the um, embroidery again from Cassandra. I'll get better and better. Anyway, boy bunny all set. We're going to get him set up in this, in his um, little egg carrier. I'm going to add the candy, close him up, put some tape on him, and he's all set to be delivered. Okay, bye. So just a few shots of the eggs after they had been found. And uh, it was so fun. People just uh, had smiles on their faces, and it was just cool to do. Okay, bye. All right, guys, so it is Friday. I have not crocheted all week until really today. I actually tried using this same yarn on a different project, and I ended up really not liking that. So I ripped it out, and it, it actually came to me that I should just make an axolotl uh, with this yarn. Now, this is the Big Twist Baby Bear yarn that... I feel like it sold out as soon as they put it on the shelf. So I've been stalking and trying to get. And initially, uh, I could only get these uh, most, these variegated ones, which is great. Um, but I keep stalking and hoping. Uh, hopefully, eventually, I'm going to get all of the colors. Uh, but I do have, like, uh, look right here. I have the gray one, the lighter gray one, and I have this one. I have two additional uh, variegates of this uh, across the room there. Uh, but I went with this one. I don't remember the color right now because I ripped these uh, labels off in my bedroom, and I'm sitting on the couch right now. So, um, this yarn is classified as a number six. But I'm here to tell you, it is not. It is more of a five. When you hold it up to posh, it's probably going to be quite similar. I haven't done that yet. When you hold it up to um, Bernard Blanket, it's completely not the same. And even the basic chenille, which is one of my faves, um, it's, it's, a, it's not the same. It's smaller. It's not a six. And so... Um, maybe parfait chunky people are saying, but anyway, I really like the yarn. The baby bear is awesome. It does, there's not fluff everywhere. And I actually like the size that you end up getting when you use this yarn. I have made the axolotl, um, this particular, this is Poggy's Place, um, pattern. And I made it before with Premier Parfait, Parfait, no which uh, I believe Chanel ba Premier Chanel Basics. And it comes out, it definitely, this is definitely smaller. This almost just about fits in my hand. The other one that I made, if I can find a picture, I'll post it up. I definitely sold it um, last year. It's one of the things that I was able to sell at that craft show. Uh, but anyway, I love this. So now I'm debating. I have this gray yarn um, that I just showed you that I can go ahead and do all of the gills and things with. I do also have a pink one. I just already put it away, so it's gonna, I'm gonna have to excavate it from the, the bag. And so I think I'm gonna wait. It's late at night uh, because I have been extremely tired all week. That's why I haven't um, actually done any um, crochet. I just haven't had the energy to do very much. And, you know, I, I think I, I got, I'm getting things back under control. I'm trying to eat uh, a little bit more cleanly for the, uh, from really now on, because I end up doing this to myself. I like to deny that I have certain conditions. And, you know, the truth is the truth, and my body will tell me when I'm gone left. And so, I don't really want to go left too much. I'm having, I've got a couple of things happening um, that, you know, I don't know if, um, you know, the bottom line, I'm going to go with the easy answer. Is it, I can complicate things. I've done it before where I wanted it to be something other than it was. But truly, truly, it's uh, really not eating well uh, uh, for someone who has diabetes. And when I don't do it, then I pay the price. So I'm back on track, I think. Uh, I've definitely been taking my medicines. 
Um, I just have eaten so poorly that the medicines probably can't keep up. So anyway, here I am trying to repent again and uh, get it back together. But anyway, I'm saying all that to say I have not crocheted all week. And even today, I thought today was a day off for us. And I thought I would spend the day crocheting. Uh, but what happened is, um, A, I didn't have the energy. And B, you know, my son had all these plans. And, you know, I ended up being the person who drove the kids everywhere today. So that was fine. Um, but... Yeah, so anyway, I got home. I was still tired, and I fell asleep, guys. And so I'm up late because I really slept most of the evening. So, you know, I'm up, and I have a little bit of energy. So I said, let me go and get this axolotl knocked out. So I think, though, for tonight, though, I'm going to stop because you need to crochet on. You crochet everything on. This is a no-sew pattern. And so, uh, I don't want to mess up because you got to get the line straight. You got to get things symmetrical. So, even though I slept a lot, it's kind of late. So, I'm going to just go to sleep. Um, for sure, I'm going to put this down even if I go to sleep or not. And then I'm going to um, pick it back up when I'm fresh in the morning and get the gills and the... Um, the whatever you call the things that go down the back uh, on there. So, yeah, that is it. I use 14 millimeter safety eyes on this one. And um, I'm happy with the placement and everything. So, anyway, that's it. Uh, at least a little more crochet to add to this week's vlog. And maybe this will be the last finished thing I end up with. All right, gang. Talk back soon. Bye picked up a turtle pattern with the same yarns I used for the axolotl. The neck is so floppy. I was just completely worried and figuring out how I could make it a little less floppy. But when you go and finish the pattern and do it to pattern, they do make sure that your neck is not as floppy, even though I think the head could be less floppy. All right, this is the axolotl from Poggy's Place. Turned out cute. I can, you know, I don't know the feet there they are you can see them anyway i think this might be better in either i need to use a smaller hook so that the frills are stiffer or i could maybe just double up some um acrylic yarn but anyway it's still cute i still have to put like uh the face details the eyes and the eye the eye outline and the eyelashes but otherwise it's all done this is gonna be the last project that I complete for the month of March. It's March 31st today. Hey guys, I'm just wrapping up uh, this week's uh, vlog. Happy Easter. Today is Resurrection Sunday. We just got back from church. I just wanted to show you, okay, I can't show you the little turtle because I gave it away to encourage somebody at church today. But here's the little axolotl, guys. Let's see. Can you see it? This is all using Baby Bear yarn from Joann's. The few that I was able to snag before it was all sold out. And that's my axolotl. I still need to, as I already said, I just wanted to show it real quick. I just need to add the facial features. And then the last thing I wanted to hold up for you guys to see is... My punt! If you saw my Instagram reel or my um, TikTok, you've already seen it. But you can see how on the bottom they wrote our information on there. They have my name. They have my date of my anniversary. Because we actually did this on our anniversary. It took six, it took like seven weeks for us to be able to pick up the finished product. And that is my bowl. It was so much fun. So that's it. Just wrapping up this video. Um, I'll see you in the next one. Until we meet again, keep it crafty, guys. Bye. I wanted to tell you that uh, for the month of March, for it to have been a very challenging month, I did a lot of stuff. And I had several days where I haven't crocheted at all. But uh, I made a lot of smalls. So uh, six bunnies. Yep. Six bunnies in total. 
I think I made three of the eggy bunnies, two lambs, one eggy chick. I made a turtle, an axolotl, and a uh, jellyfish. And then I think that comes to like a total of 15 um, plushies. I finished the poncho. So I have the spring poncho that I finished this month. Finished a 700 page book, The Covenant of Water. Highly, highly recommend that. I audioed it. I did not read it. And then I, I hosted a potluck at work, an Easter egg hunt at work as well as a card making service project with my small group at church. <sighs> I'm so super tired and we all know why. So uh, I'm going to lay low a little bit and just kind of chill as much as I can for the month of April because March was chock full. All right, that's it. That's all. Talk back. Bye for real this time. Until we meet again, keep it crafty. Bye.